Hey guys, Tommy Bryson here, and if you're watching this video, you're probably a teenager. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you something that's very important that they don't really teach you in high school, and you probably won't learn in college either, okay? So it's a good thing you're watching this video right now. Now, in this entire video, what I've done is I've stitched up a bunch of my other videos. So three videos overall. And if you watch the entire video overall, you'll walk away with everything you need to be successful in a way before you actually get into adulthood in a sense, okay? So the first video is going to be basically 10 ways to make money as a teenager. This right here is very important because the first thing you need to do before you get any money or become rich or become wealthy or buy what you wanna buy is you need to make money, okay? So this right here is super, super, super important. And how you make it is super important also. So I'm gonna give you 10 ideas and how to make money. Then I'm gonna teach you exactly how to invest as a teenager because yes, that is very possible. And then lastly, I'm gonna teach you exactly how to build wealth as a teenager. Now, investing, building wealth are two very different things and you're gonna learn that in this video. Now, before we get started, all I wanna say is, guys, congratulations on taking this step. When I was a teenager, I was buying clothes, doing dumb stuff, and just wasting a lot of my money. And so if you're here right now and you're willing to watch this entire video, it's amazing. And you're probably gonna do 10 times better than I possibly could have done because I was just not interested in this stuff. But if you are, it took me a while to be interested in stuff, but if you are right now as a teenager, you're gonna do great. And if you're watching this video and you're not a teenager, I don't care, okay? This here is a wealth of information and it's also free, so enjoy. And the first thing I gotta say off the bat is, this video contains no surveys. It contains no, hey, you need to make at least X amount of money so you can take the money out the account. None of that. And lastly, you don't need to have a bunch of experience to get started because obviously if you're a teenager, how are you supposed to have like five years or even 10 years of experience? Like that's impossible, it just doesn't make any sense. And that's why when I was growing up, I had to lie so many times in my resumes, it was crazy. I felt like a criminal. And I would put a whole bunch of references in there. They were all fake numbers that linked to my real numbers. And then I was always scared that someone was gonna call me and ask me, hey, how is it possible you had five years of experience as a babysitter when you would have been like nine years old and you would have still been a baby? Like, but no one really called me, but I was always on edge. What if someone actually calls me to confirm all of these lies I have in this resume? Um, but seriously though, in this video, I'm gonna give you 10 legit ways to go out there and make some money. Some of these ways are going to be like normal jobs, some of them are going to be, for example, businesses. And on top of that, some of them are going to be fully online. So you have some options to pick from and know exactly what you want to do. And that's the best thing if you ask me. And don't forget, since you are a teenager, you're probably going to have to go to your school counselor and ask them to get you your working papers and get confirmation, for example, from your parents or your guardian. So then that way they can write you off so you're actually able to work. And by the way, things are a lot more easier than they used to be because back in the days, I didn't have like a debit card for teenagers or a bank account for teenagers. So all the time, it was always like a huge conversation Tell my mom, hey, can you give me your social security number to put in this website? And it was automatically a no. And thank God she said no, because some of those websites were very sus, but now at least we have a bunch of options and things are a lot more secure and a lot less sketchy than they used to be, okay? So now, the very first way is the classic way of going out there and making money. And I did it, Gary V did it it also just a bunch of other people have done it because it's very easy to get started and you don't need to have a lot of money so the very first thing is gonna be for example just flipping things so you have for example Goodwill you have also garage sales and last thing you just have like thrift shops okay so what this means is for example the reason this way is so popular is because you can turn a hundred dollars into a thousand dollars in literally a week if you work very hard at it. And that's the cool thing. So when I was doing this whole thing, I could take $20. And one time I actually did this, okay? I went into Goodwill with $20 or so, and I bought these statues. 
Chinese statues for $2.50 each. There were like five of them. So right there is like what? Like some money or whatever. Can't do the math right now. Can't be bothered. But it was definitely less than 20 bucks. And on top of that, I bought a snow globe for like around $2.50 or like $5 or so. I went back home and sold those Chinese statues on eBay for like around $75. And I sold a snow globe for like around 75 bucks also. Like just like that, I turned less than 20 bucks into like 150. Boop, bop, boop. And obviously, it's not like I went in there and I was guessing what to get. No, the answer was I went in there, whether it was a garage sale, a thrift shop, or for example, Goodwill, and I would go in there obviously with my phone and I would look up the items that were there, see how much they were selling for, and see if I can get them for a massive discount at those places. Don't just go in there, buy stuff, and come out and see if they're selling. No, you go in there, you check first, and then you buy once you know, hey, I found a very good item, but obviously this does require time. And if you were a teenager, you have time. And turning 20 bucks into 150 in a day is not bad. And one time, me and my friend, we bought this super stupid doll for like around, it was like, a, I think it was like $50 or $100. And we sold it for like $300. It was like this movie prop. And I was like, wow, that is a lot of money. But there is a lot of money to be made if you're willing to go out there and search and search and search. And I love doing that. Of course, let everyone know where you are so you don't get kidnapped, okay? Now, number two is going to be selling something on the side, whether it's candy, whether it's pop, and by pop, I mean, for example, soda or whatever, or whether it's like legit food. Like I know people that will literally bring food like that's homemade to school and sell it. Now, not like legit food, like, oh my gosh, here's a full main course, but like things that are very simple to make. Like for example, like, um, I don't know how to say it in English, but it's called empanadas. It's like these flowery things that have, for example, meat inside of it. And they're very simple to make. And they sell it, for example, in schools. And also like pizza slices and little burgers and so on. Like those things sell a lot. But obviously that requires time and cooking. So sometimes just selling candy and soda goes a long way. And obviously this means, hey, you need to have some cash. Also go to Costco, go to Sam's Club, go to BJ's, and you buy those things there in bulk. And then basically, you sell it to people in school. But Tommy, they don't allow me to sell those things in my school. That's fine. You sell it to people on the streets. And usually, because you are younger and you're a teenager, people tend to buy things. And because it's convenient and it's right there and it's a dollar, you're making, for example, like 50 cents on the dollar. That's not bad. That means every time you sell something, you make 50 cents. And you spend 50 cents. That means you're doubling your money just like that, okay? Making a hundred percent on your money, and that's a good profit. You just gotta keep doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it. That's how you make things work. Now, number three is by buying passive machines, okay? Now, obviously, to get to this point, you gotta do the other stuff first because passive machines usually cost some money because it doesn't require you to really do anything except refill the machines. Now, you might do, for example, candy machines, soda machines, or for example, even um, game machines. And it all depends where you basically put them. I see a lot of them in laundromats, barber shops, and also like delis and convenience stores. You put those machines there. And also, here specifically where I live in Puerto Rico, they put them like outside of buildings. And that's pretty cool stuff, okay? They put them outside of buildings. And imagine you, for example, you have like a soda machine or a snack machine outside of a building or a convenience store or even like in a school or an office building if you get very lucky. You put them there. You refill them, then you come back, you take the money, you buy more stuff, you put it in there. All you're doing is refilling things and that money is making its own money and the machine is doing all the work for you. But obviously these machines cost some money between 500 to 1,000 to expensive side might be like $2,000. What do you find them? Use on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or on top of that, you can just go online and type in soda machine and look it up. Or for example, candy machine and look it up. Everyone knows how to Google stuff and that's the cool thing. Back in my day, when I was younger, you had to know somebody that knew somebody. But these days, everything's online. So use that to find what you want, okay? Simple, simple, simple. Now, number four is gonna be a paper route. 
I always saw this in the movies and I was like, do you really think I'm going to be going around on a bicycle throwing paper left and right? But that paper route can make you $33,000 a year. So not that funny anymore, right? And that's a decent amount of money. That's a good amount of money. And the cool thing about a paper route is basically you do it all before like 7 a.m. or like 8 a.m. So that means you have a bunch of time to still do whatever else you want to do during the day, including have another side hustle to make you money. And that's pretty cool to me. So a paper route is going to be pretty cool. Tommy, where do I go? Go to your local newspaper. Go online. Check, ask people. Where do you get your newspaper from? And then ask those people that have the paper route to say, hey, how do I get a job here? Okay, and that's the cool thing. It makes some extra money, and that's awesome. So paper routes, that's also a valid option. Now, number five is gonna be a digital skill. I always have to include something with digital because everything is digital. So you have, for example, um, video editing skills. Also, for example, Photoshop skills. You have, for example, logo design skills or just graphics overall. And it's not just, hey, I got to go out there and find me a YouTuber to work for. You could. Obviously, you can. I did that too, by the way. I used to be a video editor for other YouTubers and make money that way. And that's pretty cool stuff, but you get kind of bored sometimes. But one, or at least I got bored because I really wanted to be a YouTuber. But the reason I edited it was to make extra money so that I can basically support myself and learn the skills in the trade to then go ahead and make my own channel even better. But overall... You could go to a business and ask the business, hey, I can make you a logo. I can make your logo a lot better. I can edit all of your social media content. I can edit your photos. I can edit all the videos for you guys, and I can upload it for you and build you guys a presence. And why is this important? Because if you are, are out there on social media, you can get more customers and make more money. I know this sounds complicated, but I call this stuff like YouTube University because all of these skills I just mentioned, these are things you can basically get a master's degree here on YouTube for free. It doesn't cost money to watch a 20 minute video on how to video edit and then walk out of there knowing exactly how to video edit. Obviously, it takes a lot more skill than 20 minutes, okay? Paul, my editor, I'm, I'm pretty sure he spent more than 20 minutes learning how to edit to edit this good, okay? So obviously, it takes time to learn it, but you can learn it for free online and that's the cool thing okay so learn these skills online go to a business and then find out hey can i work for you guys and by the way here's a little side dialogue for you guys get used to rejection you're gonna have the skills you're gonna be the perfect person for the job but you might get rejected and that's fine just keep asking and looking for places don't give up you're gonna find something that's gonna be the right fit for you for a while at least until you leave because nothing's really usually like the perfect fit forever unless you work for me, right, Paul? All right, now number five, actually number six is gonna be a summer camp assistant. Now, I had no plans to put this in this video because I was like, how much can you really make being a summer camp assistant? It's like a month and a half, it's a summer job, can't make that much money. But then yesterday, I spoke to my friend who knows a guy that works for a summer camp that charges, it's an all-girl summer camp, by the way, and every single girl that goes there, their parents pay $15,000 per girl. And I was like, that's a lot of money. And that guy gets paid $500 per person that he gets to work over there at the summer camp. Meaning, imagine how much money he's actually making just by working there. Obviously, are you going to be the manager? Probably not, okay? But just by working there and making some extra cash, that's good. So overall, don't be afraid of summer jobs that are temporary for summer, but get you some money during the summer when you're not really doing anything, right? Let's be, let's be real here. Um, so you get some extra money, save it up for your summer, and you find yourself a job to work while you're also in school. But sometimes you might want to quit your regular job, work a summer job that pays you a lot more money, a lot more volume, a lot more business, a lot more money all over the place. And then once you're done there during the summer, We'll go back to your normal job or just get another job that's very similar and stack up money there also. That's an idea that I would definitely do, okay? Now, number seven is business type jobs. So, for example, lawn work, car washing, and even, for example, housekeeping. Whenever you do stuff like this, make sure you make a list of all the houses that you work for, who the people are, and then share it with somebody because, again, you never know 
where you're going to be going and if those people are weirdos or whatever and stay within a radius. I know everybody's like, you know, like teenager stuff, but nobody's an idiot, right? So, but overall, having this list and sharing it with somebody is very cool in case something does happen. So this way you're good to go. So imagine, for example, you want to do like a lawn business. If you don't have the money to buy like a lawnmower right away, it's okay to use the neighbor's lawnmower in the meantime, do the job, charge them like a little less or whatever. And then once you save up money, you buy your own, use Craigslist, Facebook for 200 bucks or whatever. And then you start doing your own thing. And let's say if you have like 10 people, you lawn them, you, you lawn them more. Well, wait, hold up. You lawn them lawn. How do you do this? You do their lawn. Okay. Every month, 10 people charge them $25 or $30. That's $300. Boom. Right there. So that's not bad if you ask me, and you could charge more. On top of that car wash, and that's like 25 per car. On top of you have, for example, housekeeping or like house cleaning or like detail stuff in there or like being a mover within the house. Like if you need to move, you call me or whatever, or work for a company that does moving. That's also extra money. All this stuff is extra money. Doesn't seem like a lot when it's just $25, but when you take a look at it in the broad side, I have 10 people I do or 25 people I do. That's awesome. And it does, it does, it is a lot of work, but obviously it's a lot of work because you're doing a lot of work. Thus, you're going to be making some money too. Okay. So it's worth it when you're first getting started. You just want to make some money and gain some experience and learn how to work hard. Because working hard plus working smart and having a vision is amazing. If you just work hard, you'll be just working hard forever. And that's not really great because you might not make a lot of money. But if you're smart about it, you have a vision. You're going to be perfect. Okay. That's going to be awesome. Now, on top of that, you also have like number eight, which is physical and online tutoring. Now, if I ever did this growing up, I could turn an A student into a D student real quick because I'm that bad. Now, overall, if you are good though at mathematics or for example, language or history or whatever people are interested in getting tutored in even a language or even for example an instrument because tutoring is just teaching somebody something they don't know because you know it better than they do okay that's all it really is and you can get paid like 25 bucks an hour 15 bucks an hour even more an hour depending on what you're actually tutoring that person whether it's physical in person, one on one, or online via Zoom or whatever. And then that way you can just do it from home and just teach that person right there. That's pretty cool. It's not just school tutoring. And by the way, one big regret I had in school was that I always would say, like, I was like a C student, B student, and also like an A student at times. But overall, I never really tried. If I would have put in the same six hours I put in playing Call of Duty every day on school, I could, I could, I would have, I, I don't even know where I would have been, okay? But I would have, I would have done a lot better than I did when I was there because I really wasn't trying hard. And if you think you're trying hard, try as hard as you do with the things you really like and put that effort into that school stuff and you'll see a massive difference, okay? Um, yeah, some things you don't like to do, but it's worth doing because it gets you to where you wanna go. That's something that I learned along the way too. Now, number nine is jobs. So like, for example, like real jobs that you actually go to and you work and so on. So you have, for example, retail fast food and on top of that, other people's businesses. So for example, I have two articles down below. One is for retail that contains over 40 different jobs that allow people to work from age 14 to age 17. So if you're within the age range, the link is down below. And I also have one for fast food restaurants, over 10 of them. Also, the link is down below. When you hit that article, it's there. Just scroll all the way down because that's realistic. Initially, they try to give you advice or whatever, but down below, that's where the full list of all those fast food jobs like Applebee's and um, all that stuff is basically there. I won't spoil it for you, but all that stuff is down there. And lastly, for like um, other people's business, imagine, for example, um, being a waiter, being an intern, or for example, even being an apprentice for somebody. That can pay some good money. And by the way, if your high school has an apprenticeship program, that's also paid to be, for example, an electrician or a plumber, whatever it is, take a look into that stuff because a lot of those skilled trade job stuff, they pay you a lot of money. And once you graduate from high school, you're able to start earning money right away instead of having to do a whole bunch of stuff. So use your time wisely, very wisely. It's worth it. I wish I would have done that, okay? Now, <laughs> I have a lot of wishes. I ended up in a good place, but I could have ended up here a lot sooner if I took the action that you're taking right now by watching a video on whatever day this is, you know, 
to learn about making more money. When I was this age, a teenager, I was more interested, not even in girls, and just like games, okay? That was my thing. And not games to try to post things and make money. It was just games to just waste my time. So this is awesome, okay? Now, number 10 and the last one is online, obviously. So online, you have drop shipping, which is, for example, you have a website where you just post products that basically come from somewhere else. So when somebody buys those products, you order from where it actually comes from, ship it over there, but you never hold anything at home and you never really have anything or spend any money because all the work is basically done with their money. So look up drop shipping on YouTube. You also have, for example, retail arbitrage. That's where you go to stores that are discount stores like Ross and Burlington and Marshalls and you buy and Walmart also. And you buy all these things at a massive discount over there that are for sale, like for sale, like clearance. You buy them there at a discount and you sell them online for full retail price and you basically keep the difference. And you also have, for example, I have another one here, which is gonna be like YouTube stuff or if you want to do a youtube channel that's also online if you want to do like a digital course that's also online and you might say tommy what would i teach someone on a digital course like if you're good at skateboarding if you're good at doing whatever it is or tutoring you can make a whole course about that doesn't matter how old you are or even like a little pdf program where you write down everything you're like okay here's how you do this there social media influence stuff right there's a lot of options out there one thing I've learned is you're never too old to learn and you're never too young to teach. And people that are very smart, they get that very quickly because knowledge is not age, but it's something else, <laughs> okay? That's what it basically is. And number 11 as a bonus for making it all the way to the end of the video. And by the way, if you made it all the way here, I want you to comment down below, money. This way I know you made it all the way to this point in the video. Um, because that way, it's a lot of spam comments, and I really don't know if it's just you or whatever. So comment down below money, your comment, or just money, and I'll reply to all the comments also. Now, the last one is to be a Villette. I don't know how to say this. Like, Villette Parkin. Is it Villet Parkin or is Villette Parkin? Because there's a T there. So do you say Villette or do you say Villet? Villette? Valet parking. My friend does this, okay? He makes a decent amount of money from the tips and so on. And he's crashed like two cars secretly. Don't tell anybody. But he drives really cool cars. And I think that's awesome. So you can see exactly what these people drive. But more importantly, take advantage and ask them, hey, what do you do? Like the people that drive those fancy cars, what do you do for work? How do you do that? How do you get started? You know, and you get like a lot of different ideas. Obviously, you don't have a license at least 16 and up, obviously, to do this, but it is a great way to make some money. Now, guys, that's all I have for you. And if you made it all the way to the point in this video, I got to tell you one last thing here because I wish someone would have told me this starting out. It's very possible to make money being a teenager. And I don't just mean, for example, like a small amount of money. I mean making like $20,000 a year, 30000 maybe even more, depending on how skilled you basically are. So it's possible. It's very doable. But do me a favor. Don't waste the money on trash. If I could do it all over again, I would have probably just wasted like 10% on things I want to buy or whatever. But all my money went towards clothes, trying to look pretty, on um, video games, trying to buy stuff. And none of those things, none of those things actually made me any money whatsoever. And I don't have any of those things today. So one big thing is I would have wasted 10%, but the other 90% when you don't have any bills at home or whatever, I would have kept that money for my college fund. That way, you don't need student loans. My first car, that way I would have taken the bus all the time. My first apartment, so I didn't have to save up money all over again and wait to move out. On top of that, also, my emergency fund or my investment portfolio. It's like when you're first getting started, you're making all of this money, which is a lot of money because you probably don't have that many bills. Or maybe you do, but it's not really that many bills relative to how much money you're going to be spending later on in life. Take advantage, grab that money, and set yourself up for the future because if you do that correctly, you will have a whole different life than your parents and the average adult out there. So take advantage and don't waste this money on garbage. I made Nike so much money. I made all these companies so much money, especially Sony. But none of that money I have today. So. 
And in this video, I'm gonna teach you exactly how to invest your money as a teenager. Now, the big thing is you probably think, well, I can't have that much money as a teenager, maybe like $5,000, $10,000 saved up overall. But by the end of this video, I'll give you a way to have around $85,000 by the time you actually turn 18. Now, if I talk about teenagers and the most successful ones out there, I gotta tell you about this guy specifically, okay? Because this guy was the most famous ever teenage investor that ever lived and by the time he turned 19 he was worth a whopping 122,000 eight hundred and thirteen dollars and a whopping 45 cents and he did this not by for example having money from his parents but by going out there and building little businesses like for example selling newspapers selling golf balls selling gambling magazines and lastly also by investing some money like you're going to be able to do by the end of this video and this guy of course is the man himself warren buffett which is back here and now he's worth like a few hundred billion dollars but that is insane, but you are a are also going to be able to actually reach the same pinnacle that he reached by the time you turn 18. Even if it's a little less, it's still a lot of money because, by the way, $85,000 or even $122,000, the average 45-year-old, yet alone like 60-year-old, is not going to have that much money, and you are going to have that much money. And to me, that is awesome. So in this video, I'll tell you exactly what to invest into how to invest, what app to use to invest, and all the details you basically need overall. Now, the very first thing is obviously, you're going to need to have a job in order to actually make money. I already have videos on that stuff, so I'll link those down below on videos on basically how to make money as a teenager. Now, I want you to erase the idea that as a teenager, all I can earn is whatever my parents give me. Or for example, all I can earn is a few hundred dollars per week, only like $200, $100, whatever. The answer is no. There are jobs that can pay you $20,000 a year, $30,000, $40,000, even $50,000 a year. The average one might be 500 bucks, for example, every single week. And that is still awesome if you ask me. Making $500 when you don't have a lot of bills is amazing. And also second, before you get to investing money as a teen, I would recommend you start building wealth as a teen first. And those are a few steps, for example, like saving up for education, for your first apartment, for your first car, and then you get started into investing. So if you wanna watch a full video on that also on how to build those steps up first before you start investing, I'll put a link down below to that full video also but the point is the reason you leave this part until the very end is because when you grab whatever money you're going to put into these investment accounts it's going to take a while for this to actually grow into a lot of money right so whatever money you invest today is not going to make you a lot of money tomorrow you're going to have to leave that money in like for a while so you got to do the other steps first because those things are going to make you more money today than this is going to make you tomorrow does that make sense but this right here investing as a teenager is going to be for the long term so when you are older like in your 30s or 40s you have enough money where you don't have to worry at all which by the way is not normal whatsoever then the most important question guys are going to be for example how to invest, where to invest your money, and on top of that, what to invest your money into. So first of all, tell me, how do I invest my money as a teenager? I just can't go and open up an account. The answer is you are correct, but you can have a custodial account. For this, you're obviously gonna need, for example, a guardian or a parent to go ahead and open up the account for you. And as a custodial, they're gonna go ahead and manage your account. Most of the times they open it up, let you do what you wanna do, but Overall, they don't own the account. You own the account. It is your account. And once you turn 18 to 25 years old, depending on how you set it up, the answer is everything is just transferred over, for example, into your name. You don't need them anymore. And then you just do your own thing. Now, one big thing is one worry I would have always had as a kid was, well, Tommy, what if I managed to invest like $100, $300, and all of a sudden, 
my parent grabs that money, goes on vacation, or buys some new t-shirts or whatever, or a new purse. Like, what do I do then, okay? The answer is that's not legal. It's not allowed. As a custodian, that money is supposed to be used all in your benefit and only for your benefit. So if they use that money for something else, the answer is you could legit kind of like sue them. So that's not allowed. But I hope that's not even an issue. But just in case you were wondering, like, what if my parent is toxic? Then you know for a fact they're not allowed to do that and it's not legal legal whatsoever. Now, where do I invest my money into? Most likely, if you're watching this video, you have already been targeted by other apps out there telling you, hey, invest over here, invest over there. So off the bat, I got to mention where not to invest because overall, you're going to see ads for companies like these. And by the way, they're not like bad companies, but overall, they do cost money. And whenever you're starting out, any fees are going to hurt you. So for example, you have Acorns. This costs money. You have Greenlight, this costs money. M1 Finance, custodial accounts do cost money. Early Bird costs money. Stash costs money. UNES costs money. This one never heard about it, so I can't recommend it. But over time, all of these cost you money to open up an account. And if you're just getting started, it's like stealing candy from a baby because you need all the money to be able to invest it because in the long run, it's going to be worth a lot of money. So I would go with the accounts that don't cost you any money, although they don't have the cool apps, the cool ads, or whatever is out there, okay? So overall, I would go first with Charles Schwab's. This is a very trusted company. Everything is zero, zero, zero. You want to see that. And they have all the investments you want to invest into from Nike, Apple, whatever it is. Everything is inside here. And they also have an app, so don't worry. And top of that, you also have Fidelity. Fidelity also has custodial accounts, which is also great and amazing. And again, it is also free, which is awesome. And also TD Ameritrade also has this stuff too. TD Ameritrade. So imagine Charles Schwab which is this one right here. You also have Fidelity and you also have TD Ameritrade. Those are the options I'm going to give you. Now on top of that, you're probably wondering, well, Tommy, okay, I know how to invest custodial account, where to invest my money into, Fidelity, Schwab's, or TD Ameritrade, but what am I actually going to be investing my money into? The answer is going to be, I recommend a Roth IRA and you can have a custodial Roth IRA. Now, don't complicate this. It's not that complicated. A Roth IRA is a retirement account you can open up once you start earning income. You can invest your money once you pay taxes, put that money in there. And the cool thing is it allows you to take out the money you put into it, but just don't take out the profits because then you will be penalized. But this way, that money grows inside of that account fully tax-free and you take advantage of it over the long run. That's the cool thing about a Roth IRA. Now, there is a max investment. You can only invest up to $6,000 a year inside of it. So if you're making a lot more money than that, which by the way means amazing, if you're able to max it out, then you can basically just invest the rest of the money into a normal brokerage account. Now, you're probably wondering right now, Tommy, this is good stuff, but I still don't know exactly what types of investments to actually put my money into because i heard about nike which is a stock i also heard about apple which is also like a stock for a company and i also heard about tesla so do i put my money into those companies that i like and i love and i know the answer is no and here's why because if you're investing as a teenager the odds that those companies are going to be around 40 to 50 years from now the answer is that is very rare. And whenever you buy a stock, you're buying a piece of the business. So if the business loses everything, you will also lose everything. So I would recommend you put your money into index funds and into ETFs. Again, don't complicate this stuff. It's not that difficult. When you put your money into one of these index funds, it's basically where people put in a lot of money to buy a lot of investments. And that way, if one company goes down, doesn't matter because you still have a bunch of other investments. Now, I'm going to show you because one big thing that I always loved was learning by example. And right now, I'm transparent. The entire market is down, is losing money. And when you're investing as a teenager, there will be good times, there will be bad times. But the whole goal is you got to hold on for the long run because that is what being an investor is all about. So me personally, I only invest into right here, these five investments right here, okay? You have, for example, VOO, which is basically right here, and I'm investing into the 500 largest companies in the US. 
I also invest into companies outside of the US, small companies in the US, also into companies that are just rising outside of the US, and on top of that, also lastly, into real estate. So when you think about my investments, just think about Tommy is invested in a way where he's invested all over the place, so this way, it's very hard for me to lose all of my money. Instead of just picking, for example, one company in the US, like Nike, I invested into 500 big companies in the US, so that way, if one goes down, another one comes up, and I don't have to worry, and I make whatever the US basically makes. That is the idea. So index funds and ETFs are gonna be the way. So if you wanna copy the way I invest or know the way I invest, just look at this right here, okay? Take a screenshot of it and it shows you exactly the ticker symbols and everything like that. But on top of that also, most importantly, there's a link down below to Amon Finance. Don't use Amon Finance for this account, but you can see exactly my portfolio and my strategy there and transfer that over into Fidelity or Schwab's or even Vanguard, which is also a great brokerage account, is also pretty solid and they have custodial accounts also. So that is the types of investments you want to invest into because these investments are going to outlive you and that is what you want. You don't want to put money into something that won't be around when you basically need it or will go down at some point and then you lose your money. Now, let's have some fun here. And my entire idea of fun is basically mathematics because I love math, I'm a nerd, whatever, I don't really care, okay? But for example, let's say you use one of the jobs I provided in my last video. And let's say you pick, for example, one of the small ones that can make you, for example, $500 a week, okay? Not bad, not crazy, but 500 bucks a week, which is not, not crazy. Now, if you're making this, for example, every year, that's around $26,000 a year, you'll be able to make by making 500 bucks per week, okay? That's awesome, stick with me here. So, let's say if taxes take 20%, because you gotta pay the government, and you take 20% for you to live on and buy whatever you wanna buy, which is fine and normal, you get to keep 60% of the money you actually earn overall. So that is around $15,600. So if you max out the Roth IRA custodial account and the normal account, and yes, you can have multiple accounts, it is fine, and you're investing $15,600 for four years, how much money do you think you're actually going to have? The answer is, well, I'm gonna show you guys right here because Again, I like to do everything via examples and not just like telling you guys nonsense, okay? So give me a second here. So right here, we have a compound interest calculator, which gives us all the numbers without us having to do all the math. Current principle is how much money you have, which is zero. But let's say you're going to be adding in $15,600 like I told you guys before, which is the money that's left over. And let's see you do this for four years. And again, this portfolio I gave you guys on average makes around 12% a year. That means you're going to make 12% on the money you invest on average per year. You'll have bigger ones, lower ones, but overall, over time, it'll be around 12%. When you click calculate here, at the bottom, it tells you exactly how much money you'll have overall in four years. That is $83,504, which is only about $40,000 less than Warren Buffett, but a ton more than the average adult. So that is awesome so far. But now let's say for example you're like hey i don't ever want to invest money again after that so you just made this money you're 18 years old you're like i never want to invest again i'm just gonna leave that money in there for 40 years and let it do what it do okay so overall guess how much money you'll have in those 40 years if you never invested anything ever again the answer is you would have a whopping 7.7 .7 million dollars and the average old person like senior citizen at 65 years old they have like 50, 100,000, and you have 7.7 .7 million in there just by doing it once when you were like 18 years old and never touching the money again. That is awesome. Now, if you're crazy and you wanna keep investing, the answer is, well, I'm gonna keep investing at $15,600 every single year. Well, the answer is you would have a whopping Wow, that is that is a that's a lot of money, okay? So, well, well, no, that's not correct because you would start off with zero. But if you did that, for example, not 21 million, you would have 13 million, which is bad, okay? No, it's still a ton, ton of money. If you ask me, that is awesome. So the point here is that just by doing nothing, you'll have 7.7 .7 million. And if you keep investing for like that long period of time, you'll have 13 million. Now, the cool thing is, this is an extra step for all the nerds out there. If you have $13 million, okay, 
and you just take out, for example, just 4% of that money every single year so you can basically live off of it, the answer is you would have an income of a half a million dollars a year. A half a million dollars. That means per week, all these you started just, just by earning $500 a week, you would be earning from your investments, okay? A whopping $10,000 a week. I mean, that's awesome. This is very hard to do, by the way, guys, okay? But just by doing it and being disciplined enough, you get to go ahead and this, this much money is ridiculous. And it's not like, for example, well, Tommy, I have to wait until I'm basically like six years old to see this money. The answer is no, like not really, because even for example, once you hit, for example, let's say you 18, you do 20 years, in 20 years, you'll have 1.2 million. So by the time you turn, for example, 38 years old, you have $1.2 million. I mean, that is amazing. Like the only 3% of people become millionaires. I think even less. So that's not bad at all if you ask me. And it's actually quite fascinating. And if you do everything correctly, you'll just let this money build up because you'll be fine. And that is awesome. Now, there is one more lesson I want to pass on to you guys for making it all the way to this point of the video. But comment down below. I made it so I know you made it all the way here along with your comment or anything else because that way I know you're actually a real person. Now, here's a lesson. When I was a teenager, I thought that becoming wealthy basically meant I needed to be a millionaire. But in reality, that's not true. The true meaning of having financial freedom where you don't have to worry about money is basically if you have your expenses be a dollar and you make passively from your investments two dollars, you are good to go because your investments cover all of your bills so you don't have to do anything. That is what being free actually looks like. But if you want to have a Lamborghini, a mansion, a fancy wife, a fancy $10,000 dog, the more things you want, the more expensive things you're going to get and the harder things you're going to get. Okay. So I recommend focus on having little wants that you actually enjoy, have a great job, have no debt, have an emergency fund fully funded, keep investing money, have a paid off home. And if you do all those things correctly, you can basically invest half, you can basically invest a ton of money. But you have so much money left over from your job that you can basically do whatever you want. Like if I make $7,000 a year, I invest half that money or whatever. I use some of the money for my investments, but I can have like $20,000, $30,000 a year just in free money to do whatever I want with it. Don't touch my investments at all. Don't worry about my bills. Just have all that money to do whatever I want to do, whether it's going on vacation, to buy a new car every single year, to do whatever you want to do. Now, I got to be honest with you guys, okay? You are 10 times better than I am. When I was a teenager, I didn't care about any of this stuff. I cared about video games. Like, that was my thing. Call of Duty, six hours a day. That was my thing. I didn't care about this stuff at all. Whenever I was making money, it was to do something to, like, buy clothes or buy sneakers or, like, buy a game or whatever. And then I would stop because that's basically what's my goal, okay? But for you, if you're here watching this video right now, and you're 14, 15, 16, 18, 19, even 20 years old, you can do so much better than I did. So I believe in you. It is hard, it's difficult, but if you want to be different and you want to have what nobody else has, you're going to have to do things that nobody else is willing to do. So it is definitely worth it. You can do it. I believe in you. And if you have any questions, just comment down below. I made it with your question and I'll answer it right away. And I'm here to support you and to guide you. But I hope this video actually helped you a ton because I wished I saw a video like this too early on and my life would have been completely differently. Like if my teachers knew this, if my parents knew this, my life would have been so much more different. But the answer is my mistakes led to you having this information. So overall, it's worth it. And the first thing is, can any teenager really build any great amount of money any great amount of wealth and the answer is yes like after i did the math while making this video i kind of figured out that basically you could have up to around sixty thousand dollars in your savings accounts by the time you turn 18 if you do things correctly and if you ask me that's a good amount of money and even myself as a teenager i touch at least 10 to twenty thousand dollars and I got to be honest, I don't know where any of that money actually is today because back then I would start a business for a goal to buy sneakers, to buy clothes, to buy video games, to buy a game console. And then once I was done getting what I wanted, 
I would basically just stop everything and halt everything because I really didn't care. I just wanted what I wanted and that was it. But by you watching this video, I know basically you are a lot smarter than I was as a teenager. So in this video, I'm going to tell you exactly step by step how to build wealth as a teenager. So this way you can be a lot better off than the average person out there. And having $60,000 in a savings account by the time you turn 18, ask any adult out there, they barely have a thousand thousand dollars to cover any expenses if you don't believe me go ahead and google that okay now the very first thing guys is as a teenager the very first thing you're going to need is going to be money and to get money in order to build wealth you're going to need to have a source of income a source of where you actually get this money and that means you're going to need to find a job or get a little business because this first money is going to be your first investment to actually build the life that you actually want to build. And to me, that's awesome. But then again, I am a nerd when it comes to money. And the first thing you might think is basically, Tommy, because I am a teenager, I am limited in the jobs I can do. And the answer is yes, but you are not super limited. There are a bunch of different options as far as, for example, all the jobs you can basically work. And you can work, for example, four hours a day during a school day and also extra hours during non-school days. So you're basically able to work like 30 to 40 hours potentially during a whole school week type thing. So that's not that bad. And in certain restaurants, for example, when you actually work there, they let you work more hours, although you're not supposed to. But you can, if you wanted to, you can work in this place and in that place. So you never really know. But the answer is it all depends where you're working and how they're actually paying you. I won't go into detail about that, but you can kind of use your imagination to guess where I'm going. Now, not just that, guys, okay? But as a teenager, you don't really need to make a ton of money because usually if you're the average teenager, you also don't have a crazy amount of expenses. You live with your parents, all right? It's a true thing. So in reality, my main focus would just be on, hey, I want to make some money, which is awesome. So focus on that. How much money am I going to make a good amount of money between eight to $15 an hour to 20 bucks an hour? That's awesome, okay? But then on top of that, if you can say, well, as long as I don't spend all this money, you're going to be just fine. Because again, you don't have that many expenses. So that is the big advantage. And just make sure that whatever you're actually doing, try different things out. See what you like and what you don't like. So that way, when you are 18, it's time to decide, hey, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. You kind of know exactly, have an idea of what you actually want to get into. But don't just focus on, I'm going to do this, this is paying me money. Focus on, I'm going to try different things out because they pay me money, but I also want to know exactly what I like and what I don't like. That is a lot more important to experiment with things. That's super, super important as far as jobs, okay? Now, number two, guys, is the most important part of this video and is whatever money you actually make, you want to create a budget for it or what I call, for example, just a simple plan on how you're actually going to use this money. Again, whenever I made money, it was for a goal. So I always accomplished it. But then after that, it was basically done and over with. And that's why I don't have any of that teenage money I ever made. But you're going to be a lot more different. OK, now my recommendation would be this. OK. What you want to do with the money that comes in is you want to split it into two categories. And the first one is my wants. Second one is going to be my needs. Now, wants are super, super important. You're already, I already know you're not the average person watching this video right now, but I want you to still have some wants because one big thing I noticed is basically whenever I would try to save a ton of money and just save, 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 and not spend anything on anything, the answer was I would usually at some point get frustrated and end up spending all of the money all at once on something very stupid. But if I managed to keep a balance and spend money every now and then on things I wanted, I never had that crazy urge that would arise for me to spend just a ton of money. So here is my recommendation is just my advice. You do whatever works for you. You can experiment and try different things out. But this is what I would basically do. Spend 10, no less than 10% of your money on your wants. 
and no more than 20% of your money on your wants. So between 10 to 20%. That is the rule. So whatever you want to use that money for, whether it's I want to buy some games, I want to buy some clothes, I want to go on this vacation, I want to save my money for this or that or whatever. The answer is you use that money for that, okay? But there's one rule. You got to spend part of that money every single month. If you want to save for something in the future, like, hey, Tommy, well, this costs $400, $500 is going to cost me a lot more. It is a want. I will save them for it. That's fine. But still save and spend a part of it. Because if you don't, if you don't spend a part of it, you're going to start having this crazy itch to spend a ton of money all at once. And that's not what you want to do. So that's the rule. You got to set aside between 10 to 20% of that money for your wants, but then also spend part of it every month and then save part of it if you want to for something that you want that's more expensive later on. That's the idea. Now, the other 90 to 80% is going to be put towards the things that you actually need to actually get done. Now, recommendation here. You don't have to do this because some parents won't accept it, but take at least 5 to 10% of your money and give it to your parents because you're saying basically, hey, I appreciate what you're doing. And it's kind of like teaching you, hey, nothing in this world is kind of like free in a sense. So you kind of pay. You're like, hey, I'm helping out with the burden, with the house, with the expenses, with the money that I actually have. Most of them would say like, hey, that's fine. Don't worry about it, whatever. But doing it is more for you than it is for them initially when you start getting it done. It's very important, okay? And it also teaches you tithing, which is also very important. Now, on top of that, what are your other needs? And I'm not talking about, hey, Tommy, I have this need to buy me some sneakers. No, I'm talking about needs. These are massive, massive goals here. So the first thing is um, education. So this is basically what I call skill training. And it is an investment. And let me break down why this is going to be an investment. Because your education, if you pick, for example, the right career or the right job, the right skill, whether it's, for example, a trade job, that means, for example, plumber, electrician, or whether it's being, for example, an accountant or a lawyer, whatever you want, what you basically want to do that's cheap and basically makes sense, the answer is, well, when you do those things, if you invest $10,000, $20,000 into getting a degree and it turns into making you forty dollars to $8,000 a year in a job, the answer is that is a great investment. It makes you a positive return. So setting money aside for that skill is going to be super important. Now, here is one other rule here. You got to do each of these one by one. So it's not like I'm going to grab the money I make and spread it around. No, you do one by one. So the goal is figure out exactly how much money you need to save for college, for example, set that goal amount. And once you hit it, you move on to the next one. And the next one is going to be, for example, your first car. Now, your first car, this is super important. The average person, they have to get a loan on their first car or they have to get it gifted or something like that. But usually they get a loan. They go into debt for it. So if you're able to set money aside to save up for a $1,000 to $5,000 first car, that's going to give you a massive advantage. Now, there is one thing I want to say most likely you have an idea about your first car. And my first car idea was basically, I wanted this red Mercedes C-Class and it was so sexy, I didn't buy it because it was a terrible investment. It's not an investment, it's gonna lose value every year, the value is gonna go down. And on top of that, if anything breaks on that car, it's super expensive. So first car recommendations would probably be, for example, anything Toyota related, Honda related, Mazda related. Just look them up, okay? Look for something reliable. It doesn't have to be sexy. Again, it's just your first car to take you to work or to school or to both, okay? That's the idea. Later on, once you have some money and you have some stability, you can buy that sexy car like the Lexus. Right now, I drive a Toyota Prius 2014. It's not sexy. But later this year, once I'm done, for example, with my house remodel, which I just bought a house, by the way, I'm going to be able to say, hey, I want to buy this Lexus, which I really like, and it looks very sexy, and it's a nice car, but now I can buy it in cash because I have the money to buy it, and I don't have to get a crazy loan. Now, that's the second thing, right? But the third thing is going to be, for example, your first apartment, which is usually going to be a security deposit 
and also first month's rents usually and sometimes even first month's rents and last month's rents. So obviously you need some cash for these things. Now, think about this. By what age do I want to move out of my parents' house, right? So you think about that. You set that deadline also, and then you say, well, how much money am I going to need? A common rule is this. Don't spend more than 33% of your monthly income on housing, on your rent, your first apartment. Again, it doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be super big. It has to be something comfortable while you basically stay there and save up money and stack up cash to do later what you want to do, which is usually buy a home that you can actually afford. So again, don't worry about how things look. Worry about what's actually going on. And by the way, by this point, you might notice, Tommy, college, car, apartment, I'm not going to be able to do all this stuff by being a teenager usually. The answer is you can. It's very possible. I'll do the math like in a second though, but it's going to be very hard. And if you only manage to do college, that's fine. While you're in college, work, save it for the first car, work, save it for the first apartment. And yes, it is okay to work while you study. Don't make that stupid mistake to just go to college and just basically study. It's stupid. Go to college, have a job, and potentially an internship. That way, when you graduate, you graduate with a bunch of experience, okay? It's a lot of work, but the work is worth it for what you actually get out of it. Because most people, they graduate with a bunch of debts. That's $20,000 to $50,000, which is basically just like crippling. They also have, for example, a bunch of debt on the car. And they also get crazy expensive apartments they basically cannot afford. And that's not what you want to do. And lastly, the fourth thing you want to save up money for is going to be your first investments. Usually, it's going to be a Roth IRA with some ETFs and index funds. You don't have to understand everything I'm saying right now. Just understand these are very safe investments for the future. But the reason investing is not number one and it's actually number four, the last one, is because it's not a priority, not at least in the beginning, because usually the best return on your money is going to come by investing in yourself and setting yourself up first. Because if you spend $10,000 in investment, you won't get it for the next 10, 20, 30 years, like a reasonable amount. But if you spend $10,000 on yourself on a degree or a, a license or something like that, you can make a higher income like that in two to four years. And that is a better return overall. So that's the idea. These are the four main goals that you basically want to save up for. These are massive. These are big. It's going to take a minute to actually get there. You have college, first car, first apartment, and then investment, usually into a Roth. Now, here's the math, guys, okay? The math is very simple. And before you say, Tommy, this is impossible. I'm not going to be able to do it. I have links down below to a video I made about different jobs you can basically do as a teenager to actually make a good amount of money. Now, let's just say, as a reasonable amount of money, let's say you manage to make $500 a week. You might say, Tommy, this is a crazy amount of money. It's a lot of money. The answer is it's not that much money because if you divide this by seven, you got to make $71 a day. If you divide it, let's say you work on an average of four hours, right? You got to just figure out a way to make 17. It's not really this much, honestly, because in reality, here's the real math. I want to do everything right here. If you can work for 15 bucks an hour, including tips and everything right inside of it, because your base pay might be eight bucks an hour, but with tips and extra side hustles, you can potentially make at least 15 bucks an hour, okay? So if you have this and you work, for example, four times five is 20 hours during the week, so boom, you have $300, and on top of that, during the weekends, you do eight hours times two, that's gonna be 16 times 15, that's another, for example, like 240. So overall, let's just say round down to basically 500 bucks a month, right? 500 bucks a week. So that's, for example, per month, that's going to be $2,000. Per year, that's going to be around $24,000. This right here is not a lot of money. It isn't, right? For the average person. But when you don't have that many expenses, this right here is a lot of money. This is basically, you can do whatever you want with this money. It's a lot of money. So overall, if you have this much money, and let's say as a teenager, you're able to work for the next four years or whatever, right? So times four, well, you're going to have around $96,000. So from 14 to 18 or from 13 to 17, you have $96,000. That is a lot of money. Now, overall, taxes are going to take around 20%, okay? Your wants are going to take around 20% potentially, okay? Even probably less, okay? But let's say overall, 
you get to keep around 60% of this money. That means you keep around $57,000, nearly $60,000. Some of you guys are gonna be able to save a lot more money. But let's say your degree is $40,000. By the way, when you go to college, um, I'm gonna give you some resources right now to actually spend a lot less money. But the answer is, you still have money left. You wanna buy a car, $5,000, okay, great. Your first apartment, let's say $3,000, okay. Investments, you get to basically max it out the first year. All the money is basically there to do exactly what you need to basically get done. And this way, you start off life with a lot more of a better foundation, and that is awesome. Like, trust me when I say, this right here is not normal. It's not easy, and if you do it, you will be a lot better off, but it's because you're basically not normal. When I was this age, I basically just spent all the money on trash, and that's what the average people basically do. Now, I wanna give you guys some resources here. I want to give you five books to basically read if you actually want to take this very seriously because you got to have the knowledge and information. And right now, this right here is a part of the knowledge, but it's just the first step, okay? Because you're going to need a lot more. Now, the first book is going to be this one called um, Debt-Free Degree by Anthony O'Neill. This book was actually written for parents because parents usually pay for stuff, but if you're going to pay for it, then you got to read this right here. It shows you exactly how to graduate with no debt. And it's basically go to community college, apply for a lot of scholarships, have a job, pay for it that way. And remember, okay, usually when you go to college, they're gonna have financial aid and different ways to so actually pay for it. So it's not really like forty thousand dollars like at all, potentially, if you do it the smart way. So community college, two years, that's very cheap. And then you go to the um, normal college to actually get the other two years for your bachelor's degree and then boom you graduate or if you don't go to college you just get a trade job that's even a lot simpler and also a lot better and you also earn a good amount of money too now the second book is going to be called right here atomic habits um by james clear you probably asked me tommy why are you giving me a book about this stuff right here the answer is because building good habits is going to be super important and you're going to need very good habits to do what you want to do, which is basically do something that the average kid is never going to be able to do. This is hard stuff, okay? Now, the third one is going to be called I Will Teach You To Be Rich by Ramit Sethi. I don't have a solid copy of this one because I read it on Audible, so I listened to it overall. It's a good book, though. I Will Teach You To Be Rich by Ramit Sethi. It teaches you about credit cards. It teaches you about, for example, also um, investments. But I want to ignore everything aside from the investment information because that is very solid but i wouldn't get into credit card debt and then all this vacation stuff just don't do that stuff at all you don't need it now the fourth book is going to be called um total money makeover by dave ramsey this guy is very extreme like overall he's all no debt no nothing but he's very good at what he does overall and you will get a lot out of it and when you read these books you might say tommy these books don't relate to me in a way, because you're basically a kid, you probably don't have that much debt or whatever, but overall, they will relate to you based on the averages once you do become an adult. And by knowing this stuff right now, you will be miles ahead, not not teenagers, but adults overall, and that that is an amazing thing. And the last book is gonna be called Learn to Earn by Peter Lynch. Now don't forget, books are not free, but you can get them for free, for example, on YouTube, the Audible version, but if you can't afford to spend, for example, 10, 15 bucks from your first check, the answer is spend it on a book because the book is an investment. It keeps giving you more and more and more money because the knowledge that you actually get from it is amazing. Like God and books and knowledge, all this stuff goes all together. Super, 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 super important. But guys, overall, that is it for this video. So overall, just don't forget, having an income, having a plan, and having goals, that is what's gonna get you to success okay and i'm so excited for you guys okay because if i knew this stuff well not just no if i knew this stuff and i was willing to do it when i was a teenager i would have been in a whole different level right now even for example if i managed to make 500 bucks okay like for example for the like twenty four thousand dollars well twenty six thousand dollars because actually like well this is actually the real math okay it's actually twenty six dollars a year it make 500 bucks a week um, but even if you do like summer jobs, you actually make even more money. But if I manage to just do this, for example, not even four years, just like two years, right? And keep just, for example, 80% of it. Well, let's say 60% of it, right? I would have had $31,000.
that would have been enough to pay my student loans, which is basically like $20,000 or $21,000 like overall. That would have been enough to get my first car, so I would have to take the bus every single day. And that would have been enough also to get my first apartment, which I paid like $2,000 for, by the way, like overall. And that would have been enough to start off my investments. Like, that's it. You don't have to be like, oh, four years deep. Two years is enough. Like, it's, it's crazy. And if I would have been smart enough not to go to private school and all this other dumb stuff I did, I would have been so much better off. Like, having this stuff right here would have been a lot more different. But then I wouldn't be the person I am today to teach you all this stuff today. So it all works out in the end. My mistakes are going to help you. So that's worth it to me in a way. So if you made it all the way to the end of this entire mini course or mini eh, plan or whatever you want to call it, I got to congratulate you. And for that, I'm going to give you one clap. Okay. Now don't stop here. Put everything that you learn in this video into action because just knowing what you need to do and doing it consistently and put it into action are two very different things. Okay. I knew what to do, but I didn't always do it. And when I started doing it, things started working out. So guys, again, I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope you actually learned something. And again, I want to congratulate you because again, you are very far ahead. And if you want to keep up to date with the channel and more ways to make money, more ways to invest as you get, as you get even more advanced, the answer is subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you're notified. And on top of that, smash the like button on this video. That way, more people out there can actually watch this entire video and learn more about investing as a teenager, building was as a teenager, and also making money as a teenager because I didn't know it was possible, but it's very possible. All right? Thanks for watching. As always, peace out, and welcome to the long-term team. And it's going to be a long road for you, but you're going to get there a lot more earlier because it started out a lot more earlier. Peace.